Hey, what's up guys? This is Foriam again back with a new quick guide for Pokemon Legends Arceus. Yesterday I shared my ultimate top 5 tips and tricks about things that you need to know to make your shiny hunts as fast and efficient as possible, maximize your catch rate for shinies per hour let's say, and in this guide I also used two of my favorite items which I want to dedicate more time to today. We're gonna talk about the sticky club and smoke bomb, how you can unlock the recipes to craft these yourselves, also where you can farm for the ingredients ingredients to make it less pricey to get your hands on these bad boys and of course also if you actually have all the money in the world definitely make sure to stick till the end because i'm also going to show you some locations where you can actually find them in treasure chests so guys let's get right to it all right, so here we are in Jubilife Village. Let's check out the crafting table because this is where the magic happens. So the smoke bomb and also the sticky glob. Sticky globs are pretty hard hitting balls. If you hit a Pokemon with it, you can pretty much stun them, creating a window of opportunity to catch them while you have already engaged in combat with them. So even if they have an exclamation mark above their heads, you basically throw this thing, then throw a Pokeball and you have a pretty high chance of catching them. Next up, we have the smoke bomb. Basically, the smoke bomb creates a cloud, and this cloud will reduce the visibility in the area of Pokemon, so it will be very difficult for them to notice you. You can pretty much just keep running around in the area where you have the smoke bomb active, and you can catch all the Pokemon, which is awesome for mass outbreak hunting, because you just throw a smoke bomb right in the middle of the outbreak, and you just catch every single one of them for the first one, we're gonna check out our progress. So right here we can see our playtime, our current time, and also the stamps of how many noble Pokemon we've already defeated in the game. The first one is Cleaver, and that is pretty much all you need to do to unlock the very first recipe. After beating this guy in the Obsidian Highlands, you will unlock the Smoke Bomb recipe. And um, the cool thing is, you can also talk with Envin to get your hands on the materials. Basically, for this item, you're gonna need Caster Ferns and also suit food roots. I will show you in a second where exactly you can farm for these. Next up we have the sticky globs. These are slightly more tricky to craft but I will also show you how you can farm for all these items in a second but first you want to know how you can unlock this recipe. Basically all you need to do is talk with Envin once again. I think you're gonna have to progress a little bit in the game before this recipe actually pops up but basically it's a 20,000 credit purchase so it is pretty expensive but it is definitely worth getting your hands on. As you already saw with the smoke bomb, we can also buy the caster fern exactly right here for 140 credits, but the rest of the items actually cannot be bought anywhere in the village. The cool thing is though, what you can do if you've already upgraded your general store to the maximum level, if you unlocked all the wares at this place, you can buy both the smoke bomb and the sticky bombs right here. And we just crafted a smoke bomb ourselves with the ingredients we purchased at the craftsman and the total price price was 440 so it is definitely more interesting to actually buy them right off the bat right here it will save you a lot of money in the long run the sticky gloves though are going to be pretty pricey if you purchase them every single time you're gonna throw many of these bad boys and as you can see they cost 800 each so right now I'm gonna show you my favorite farm spots for both the caster fern the suit food root and of course also the spoiled apricorn and balls of mud all right, so first off, we have the spoiled apricorns. Right here on the west of the village, you can actually find a farmland. Right here, you can have crops grown in the field, which basically allows you to cultivate crafting ingredients. So right here, we have Mr. Colza. If we talk with this guy, you can actually spend money to grow a crop of your choosing. You can also choose for apricorns, and sometimes you will find spoiled apricorns when doing this. Of course, there are more ways to get your hands on spoiled apricorns. Not only those, by the way. Uh, we're actually gonna travel to the Crimson Mirelands right now. My hands down favorite place to far for all the ingredients for both the sticky globs and smoke bombs. All right, so here we are in the Crimson Mirelands, the Bogbound Camp. If we open up the map, it's exactly right here, pretty central, and we have all the farming around us, guys. Seriously, this entire place is extremely nice 
to get our hands on all the ingredients. First off, what you want to do is open up your Pokedex. And right now we're going to check out the entries for the Crimson Marlins. For example, the hot potatoes right here, or hippo potatoes. I always call him hot potatoes. The items he carries, suit food root and balls of mud. So basically, if we catch this fella or defeat him, he has a chance of dropping both items. Same for the hippo down, suit food root, balls of mud. Right here we have cricketot, apricorns, licky tank, caster fern, ball of mud, mothy, Spoiled Apricorn, Milkrow, Paris, Ball of Mud, same with the Parasect. And yeah, the list just keeps going. All the Pokemon pretty much which you find in this area can be caught or defeated to get your hands on these crafting items. All right, so if we travel out of the Bugbound camp towards the south, you already have your very first hotspot right in front of us. At the front door, basically. So um, this is the Sludge Mound. Right here, you can find plenty of these Hot potatoes, let's say. We already have our very first victim right in front of us. So basically what we're gonna do is carefully approach him, throw our ultra ball, or you can also, of course, defeat him for the rewards. And after catching this fella, you can see that sometimes they will give you a reward, this time a ball of mud. We've got another one right here. So let's catch this one. Then a second one right there. Actually gonna use a quicker traveling ball for this one. We caught a hot potatoes once again, level 23. No reward this time. This time a suit food route, so you can tell that these guys, they just keep dropping the items which you're gonna need for this uh, farm. Around this box, let's say, you also have suit food routes around us, like everywhere. If we just keep running around with weird deer, we have another one right here. You can just keep picking them up, pretty easy to get your hands on them. And uh, right here we also have a Geodude, so let's quickly catch this fella. While you're doing this, you also find these little hay bales. Uh, if you take them down, you can find even more of these caster ferns. Guys, yeah, seriously, this place is rich of all the ingredients you need. So in this small area, you already saw that we got our hands on balls of mud, suit food roots, and also the caster fern. So that is almost everything we need already. Of course, after doing this for a while, you will probably run dry on resources on the map. And the Pokemon also take some time to respawn. If you want to make sure that happens very fast, just wait some time in the camp and they will be there in no time. You could also talk with Sir Leventon to return to the village, traveling to Jubilee Village, and then quick traveling back to the Crimson Mire will make sure that all the resources in the zone will respawn. This also counts for the Pokemon. Pretty much everything you've looted, everything you've caught or defeated will be there once again so you can continue the hunt for new resources. So after gathering for a couple of minutes, we got our hands on quite some of these resources. Basically five balls of mud because I actually used many of them for showcase purposes, but also for the suit food roots, 31 and 24 caster ferns. Right now, all we need are the spoiled apricorns. But I think the easiest way to get your hands on spoiled apricorns is just travel back to Jubilee Village and go to the Obsidian Fieldlands. Guys, seriously, this is a gold mine for spoiled apricorns. Basically, if we open up the Pokedex for a second, right here we have Bidoof, spoiled apricorn, Starly, spoiled apricorn. Pretty much everything you can find in the starting area drops spoiled apricorn. So what you're gonna do is hop on your weird deer and just catch every single Pokemon which you can find. Of course, the Shinxes are quite aggressive, so it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to catch these easily. But basically, we're gonna drop an Ultra Ball right on top of him. We're also checking out some Bidoofs right here. So we're gonna catch this guy. And get back to the forest. Ooh, seriously! We just found a full odds shiny Whirlpool. Wow, that is insane, guys. But uh, basically, also, these fellas will give you a um, spoiled apricot. Let me just quickly throw in a raspberry to charm this guy a little bit. Because, wow, that is pretty lovely. Here we go. And here we go. So let's see what these guys drop. Spoiled Apricorn. And the shiny didn't drop anything. But basically it's a shiny, so I'm happy. Right here we have a couple more Starlies and also some Bidoofs. So out of the 14 Pokemon we just caught, including the shiny, we got our hands on five spoiled apricorns. So you can tell that this is a pretty interesting farm. And of course, if you are running out of them, you can just quickly return to the village, get back to this place to reset the spawn. Gotta quickly rest a little bit because this farming makes me kinda tired. 
No, but guys, seriously, the Cobalt Coastlands is another great spot to farm for one of these items. In particular, this time, we're gonna check out the Balls of Mud. So basically, what you wanna do is quick travel. Of course, if you already uh, unlock the quick travel, right here near the Fire Spit Islands. This brings us to one of these caves and if you can enter them guys you are in for a treat because basically every time when you enter this instance you will find plenty balls of mud on the floor exactly right here. So you're just gonna pick up every single one of them and seriously you can tell how many of them are on the floor right here. They will always be here. After picking up every single one of them, I'm gonna travel back to Jubilife Village and then back to this place. Look at that! Here, once again, we have the Balls of Mud. So basically, if we open up our inventory right here, we currently have 23. And uh, we're just gonna pick up every single one of them once again. And this brings our total to 43. So you can find 20 every single run, which only takes you like maximum a minute. All right, so here's a little bonus which I talked about in the beginning of the video. If you aren't really into crafting, gathering these resources, or in general spending time in Jubilife Village, you can also find smoke bombs and sticky gloves in treasure chests and crates. The first location is in the Coronet Highlands near the Primeval Grotto and Sacred Plaza. What you're gonna do is just hop on Weird Deer, walk around the ruins, and sometimes you will find crates or treasure chests which are gonna break with your Pokémon. As rewards, you can get your hands on different Pokéballs, stealth sprays, but also the sticky glove and smoke bomb can be part of the loot table. So definitely make sure to check out every single runes to get your hands on all this treasure. If you haven't unlocked Coronet Highlands yet, you should also definitely check out the Cobalt Coastlands. Near the ship wreckage on Deadwood Haunt and Sands Reach, you can also find treasure chests and many crates which can also have either the sticky gloves or the smoke bombs inside. Definitely make sure to visit all the smaller islands around the Cobalt Coastlands because for example right here to the northeast of the Molten Arena we actually have one with two treasure chests which can also have these items inside. Alright, so guys, that is pretty much everything you need to know to unlock both recipes for the sticky glob and the smoke bomb, but also farm for the ingredients very fast and efficiently on both the Crimson Mirelands and the Obsidian Fieldlands. If you found this video helpful, definitely make sure to hit that like button. I spent a lot of time working on my videos and it helps me out big time. Of course, also subscribe if you're new to the channel. A lot more is coming your way. Right now, though, it is 4 am out. Time to work on my next video. I'll catch you guys very soon. Have an awesome day. Take care. Peace.